It's the Joel Shit Show featuring Joel Shit. Hi, welcome to the Joel Shit Show. I'm your host, Joel Shit. So, it's colder now than it's been all week, including at night, because a cold front passed through. It's been between probably 45 and 55 for the past week, past four days anyway. But right now, it's probably about 44, 45. It's really cold. And cold rain is not like warm rain, for one thing. It's cold. And it is still rain, yes. But uh, the rain, you know, when we get a warm storm, you know, big deal. 55 is not cold. But 45, good God, who can handle that shit? Not me. So it is buff, 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 freezing. That's what uh, David Byrne was singing about in the Talking Heads when he was singing Psycho Killer. You know, fa 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 for reason. But, uh, yes. Last night I watched the San Jose Sharks and Anaheim Ducks play, and in the first period there were two fights. The first one you could say Ryan Klo beat George Peros by decision, but it was a unanimous decision. George Peros, his first game back in 10 games. He was not yet ready to fight. Oh yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Your lights aren't even on. I should have turned in front of you and gotten hit. I would have got a free new car. Because the law says if your wipers are on, your lights must be on. If it's raining, you must have your headlights on. It's a state law, but it is not enforced. It is like the cell phone law. So, people don't drive with their lights on when it's raining. And they need to make it so in cars, your lights automatically turn on when the car is getting peed on. Just like it should have a solar detector, and if it's dark out, the lights should automatically turn on. And then if the engine's off, the lights turn off. You can't leave that up to the owner to figure out. You know, people are just too busy listening to Rush Limbaugh on the radio or whatever the hell it is that they do to remember shit like that. All right, there we go. The turning here with the uh, with the 90 degrees. Okay, there we go. Yep. If you want something warmer than 45 degrees, you're just going to have to make a right angle turn somewhere. That's the only way you're going to get anything higher. And then the second fight. Let's see. Chip Chura and Jody Shelley, I believe. Jody Shelley. I don't think it was Jody Shelley, was it? It was definitely Chip Chura. It had to have been Jody Shelley. And uh, Chip Chura lost that one, but it was a much shorter fight. Whether it was Jody Shelley or someone else, he landed on the guy pretty quick, but, you know, that, that happens. And then later, Chip Chura had an assist on Anaheim's only goal, so I guess he got the last laugh, except he didn't because the Sharks won. That was the only goal of the game. I should have turned on Dale. I haven't gone this way to the gym in the daytime in so long that I forgot about what the traffic's like. Because usually it's 5.30 in the morning, right? I always tell you, oh, it's 5.22. And so there's no traffic, so I can go right up to the light and turn right. But today, no such luck. No such a luck. Okay, now the light's changing. Working from home today, yesterday I met with the chair of orthopedic surgery and he loves the stuff I've done. If you want to see a sample page, go to ortho.stanford.edu slash spine and then uh, in the left navigation you'll see a link, several links of course, but one of them says uh, Eugene Carragy MD. Click on that one and you can see a faculty profile. All the other links of doctors on the left navigation go to their community academic profile. I didn't make those, but if you want to see what everyone's um, faculty profile is going to look like, uh, go to ortho.stanford.edu slash spine and then click on the link that says Eugene Carragy MD. And what this means is you are going to see what the new uh, clinic pages look like and what the new faculty profile pages look like. The clinic pages will have more stuff. I've, you know, I didn't sign a non-disclosure agreement, but it hasn't happened yet, so I don't really want to talk about it because it hasn't been, not everything I'm going to do has been approved yet. And, you know, I don't want to dick you around and be a cock tease and other penis words, so we're just going to have to let it go. But, uh, and then I met with my manager, actually I met with my manager first, and that went fine too. Everyone's really happy with what I'm doing, as well they should be, because I am there to help them. That is my role. I am not, I am leading something that I am just being helpful. It's, it's fine. So, and then Yahoo was really busy, like ridiculously busy, and then it got really slow, like ridiculously slow. 
I think uh, the last half of my shift the last two days I've had one thing to do and then the first half of my shift I've had about ten things to do in the last two days so if I've gotten through the first part I've been fine that's boring though why, why there's really no reason for you to have any interest in any of that so but other exciting things uh, it seems as though there are retail exclusives in 2010 Topps Baseball at Target. They are, uh, I think it's the 1951 Topps Redbacks, I think that's uh, exclusive or something. I was looking at what you get in the packs. There's a lot of insert sets. People are calling them subsets. They're not subsets. Subsets are part of the base set. Inserts are extra. It all started in the 1990s with Fleer and Rookie Sensations. Well, that's not true. It all started in 1990 with Upper Deck with the Reggie Jackson, find the Reggie. But Fleer really took it to another level when they started saying an insert in every pack. And it was true. You'd buy a pack of Ultra or whatever Fleer was making that day, and you would get, you know, in an X card pack, you would get X minus one base cards and one insert in every pack, and there would be several different inserts. Ultra was the best at this. Ultra was just a fun, fun product to break. Um, it's really a shame they made so much of it, but it's nice though because you can buy Ultra now for, for ultra low prices. And uh, I was looking at Baseball Card Exchange's website, like BBCExchange.com or something. I don't know. And there's just so much wax from the '90s that that uh, is ridiculously cheap. You can buy cases for under $200. Even some big ones like 2000 Bowman Chrome, which has the Barry Zito rookie and Roy Oswalt rookie, and not much else to be honest. Um, you can get that a six box case for 140 bucks. I've been sitting on mine that I only paid 400 for mine, but that was eight years ago. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, I felt like I was getting a good deal, but obviously not. Maybe I paid 200, but whatever I paid, <laughs> it's cheaper now. There's no money there, but that's okay. So anyway, it is what it is, and uh, I'm very excited. And uh, when my jumbo cases come in then I will have the ability to break them and I don't know what I'm going to do. I've already got my order in for 400 count boxes coming to my work so I have to break them now. Oh my god, I forgot. It's crowded <laughs> after 5.30 in the morning. There's no parking. That's all the time we have for today. Visit us on the web at joelshitshow.com. Email joel at joelshitshow.com.